92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com. Streaming audio live, RTC Channel 5, and streaming audio and video soon to be on RTC Channel 4. That's why Dakota's here. Hey, Dakota, how you doing? Doing good. Good. Welcome. Nice to have you with us. Woodlawn Hospital Show for the month, and we welcome Chief Financial Officer John Kraft. Good morning, John. Good morning, Tom. Thank you very much for being with us today. Absolutely. Okay. You're going to give us some of the highlights from the Board of Trustees meeting yesterday, right? Yeah, we had a board meeting yesterday. Uh, we kept it pretty short with, uh, with the big guy being out of town. Uh, we didn't want to put too much on the agenda. But yesterday was our uh, audit presentation. Uh, BKD does our audit every year, and we do a presentation with them. Um, either April or May uh, board meeting. Uh, we were fortunate enough to have two of the commissioners with us. Appreciate their attendance very much. Uh, and uh, the, the gist of the uh, audit presentation was we had another clean opinion, non-modified opinion. Uh, they still put in there, as they do every year, segregation of duties because we don't have enough resources or personnel to, to segregate some of the duties that they think we should. Uh, it was a very good year. We had uh, some pretty substantial increases in in net revenue, net income, and also cash. So uh, 17 was a good year. So um, Mr. Colger can be congratulated <laughs> for his final year in office. Uh, as he said, 18 is mine, so I've got some big shoes to fill. Um, then BKD did a, a health care update for us. Okay. Uh, a couple of things that they wanted us to be on watch for on the horizon. Your federal and state news that uh, even though healthcare has not been in the in the uh, news lately with all of the stuff going on overseas, um, they, they still want us to uh, be on the watch for a couple things. As you know, Woodlawn Hospital is a critical access hospital and we get some rural safety net uh, rules for that, like we get cost reimbursed. Um, even though they are very uh, they think that the rules are not going to change. They want us to keep track of that because there are a lot of rules that are changing out in, in Washington. And then uh, the, the other thing was uh, the big um, nomenclature on the horizon in healthcare is value-based purchasing. Again, we're as a critical access hospital, we're exempt from some of the rules for value-based purchasing, but that may not last forever too. So they kind of want us to keep an eye on that and plan for if anything changes on the horizon. Uh, the other item is uh, the state has a new preauthorization law that they put into place. Uh, hospitals have had uh, um, a very hard time trying to keep up with all the different insurance companies and the way they preauthorize and what they preauthorize. So the state's trying to get, get some reins on that and, and standardize it throughout the, uh, throughout the industry. Um, the monthly financials for the month. Um, this was kind of my first not so good news for the <laughs> for the board for the year. Uh, we had revenues of 11.7 million. Uh, contractuals were 7.4 million. Uh, that's 63 percent, a couple percent over what we usually experience. Uh, we had uh, an unusually high mix of um, uh, Medicaid for the month, which doesn't pay as well as some of the Medicare and some of the commercial. Uh, we had operating revenues of 4.3 million. We had expenses of 4.9 million, and non-operating revenues of 300,000. So we lost about 280,000 for the month. Um, but all in all, not too bad. Okay, that was for the month of April. April. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the discussion with the audit firm, any talk about the Affordable Care Act, uh, how that's going, any perhaps changes to that on the horizon? Is it still pretty much in place as we know it? It's still pretty much in place. They Again, they're saying keep an eye on what goes on in Washington. As, as I mentioned, the, the uh, news has been pretty silent on the health care front. So um, as you know, we kind of hold our breath for when Washington <laughs> speaks. So And they haven't spoken too much lately. So we're waiting for them to, to start back in on the, on the health care. And, and overall, the Affordable Care Act has been pretty good for small hospitals like Woodlawn Hospital, right? Absolutely has been. Uh, we get we get uh, a couple million dollars per year um, on some of the stuff. The uh, um, 
marketplace isn't as active as it has been before. It's slowly starting to shut down, but um, but still, it's it's been very good for the hospitals uh, for disproportionate share and that type of stuff, too. And you still have those folks at Woodlawn with the office who can, if people yes. want to talk about that, yes. come see Claim, them, right? Yes, Claim Aid is, okay. is right in that front office area. Um, if anybody comes in and uh, um, they have uh, they don't have any insurance or anything, um, we usually try and get them to claim aid to see what they can do to help them out uh, any way that they possibly can. And having used them before myself, I can tell you that they're very thorough and very knowledgeable about what they're doing. Yes, we've been very pleased. Uh, we've had no complaints. Um, about the advice that they're given or, you know, the assistance that they're giving in getting people signed up for insurance or anything. So they have been very good for us. John Kraft is our guest. He's the new chief financial officer at Woodlawn Hospital. Folks not familiar with John Kraft, how about a little bit about your background? Uh, well, I'm, you know, Dave and I did a presentation a little while ago about succession planning. And we said, out with the old and in with the new, but it's not quite so new. I've been in the been in healthcare ever since I've been out of college, uh, so it's about about 40 years now. Um, and I've been in uh, originally from Central Illinois area, Peoria, Illinois area. Uh, been living in Indiana for about 18 years okay. now. Um, so uh, have enjoyed Indiana very much. Have enjoyed uh, lived up in South Bend area for a while. Um, living in Winnemac, I came down there as the chief financial officer before moving over here, uh, and have enjoyed the area very well. Excellent, excellent. And of course, uh, Dave Kogel just resigned earlier this month, or retired, I should say, earlier this month. <laughs> yes, he did. Uh, um, he re he uh, retired on May 11th. Although he'll tell you it's May 12th because <laughs> it's a numbers thing with him. He uh, he graduated from high school in '68. He also turned 68 on May 12th, so everything <laughs> kind of came together for him. And, of course, uh, Dave had been in Woodlawn for quite a few years now, so we wish him all the best in his retirement. Absolutely. I, he is. He may be gone, but he is definitely not forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> he left enough notes for everybody, I think, that he'll be remembered for a long time. Absolutely. John, I'll... tell us, uh, Chief Financial Officer, how much of your job involves planning a uh, year out, three years out, five years out, that type of thing? Uh, it, it, quite a bit. Um, stuff that we've been, that we are planning to do right now, um, can go out as much as two, three, four years. It, it gets tough to go further than that just because the healthcare environment changes quite dramatically at some times. As I just mentioned, we're waiting for Washington to start talking, and when they start talking, then we may have to change some of those strategic plans. But we absolutely have to plan for two, three, four years out in advance just to make sure that we stay ahead of certain things. Last time we talked with John, or the last couple of times, uh, he has discussed the possibility of some room renovation at Woodlawn Hospital. I wondered if that came up at the board meeting yesterday, whether that is something we're still looking forward to maybe a year, for, a year or so from now. John has worked with BSA, um, okay. the architects. They, uh, they have some preliminary plans. They were handed out at the end of the board meeting yesterday. So they're going to re be reviewing those over the next month. And we hope to come back with them with uh, a little bit more solid detail on, uh, on the renovations uh, that we're planning on. Okay. Let's go back to something kind of basic. Uh, let's say someone comes to Woodlawn Hospital, has a, a procedure done, uh, finds themselves in a position where they can't pay for that. As chief financial officer, what, what kind of recommendations would you make to them? What should they do? The first thing I would tell them is to go in and talk to Claim Aid. Okay. Claim Aid, what they'll do is, is they'll see if they're uh, available for Medicaid. They'll see if they're available for the marketplace. Uh, they'll look at all that stuff. Um, and then at the same time, they can talk to one of our financial counselors, and our financial counselors will lead them through the process, too, on whether they're eligible for, for uh, um, some charity care or, or anything like that, put them on a payment plan, something like that. Uh, for the, uh, the issue probably becomes just don't ignore it, you know. Correct. Take, take care of it, act on it, do something about it. Correct. We're, we're there to help them out, so as long as they contact us, um, and we have dialogue with them, uh, we'll help them out as much as we possibly can. Even though you're new to the job, you're not new to the job because you've kind of been working on this for, what, the last year or so. Mm -hmm. 
take a look at Woodlawn Hospital overall financially. Or, I mean, are do we? I know it can always be better, but where do you think we stand? We stand pretty good. I mean, okay. rural health, critical access hospitals, and rural health care in general throughout the nation is struggling right now. Um, things are getting much more complicated. Um, like I say, every time the federal government gets involved, we have to do something. We have to collect data or something. So it's 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 getting much more difficult. And the insurance companies are always trying to squeeze the dollar because uh, how many times do you hear that uh, my my employees' benefits are are taking away my bottom line. I mean, I hear that all the time from, from companies, and, and we listen to that stuff. But uh, um, but here they're in very good financial shape compared to the, uh, the rest of the critical access hospitals. Um, what BKD does do for us in the presentation is they'll give us some thresholds from some of the other critical access hospitals that they deal with, and we're either at or favorable to the thresholds that are out there with the other critical access hospitals. So they're doing very well. One of the other things, and I'm not sure this falls into your uh, area of expertise necessarily, but John and I have had conversations about ever since the hurricane in Puerto Rico, the difficulty some doctors have in prescription drugs and being able to uh, get enough of those, not have to circumvent the system in order to to prescribe some. Mm -hmm. uh, has that lessened up a bit? Do you know how it's, that's going? I, it's gotten a little bit easier. Okay. It's still not as easy as it was before all this occurred, but it has eased up a little bit. I haven't heard quite as much mm -hmm. about uh, about getting supply as much as we did a couple of months ago. So that has eased up a little bit. Okay. Again, John Kraft is our guest. He is the chief financial officer for Woodlawn Hospital. Anything that might uh, be coming up at the next board meeting in the month of June, John, or is it kind of too early to predict? Well, we're going to probably go over the plans for, okay. the, for the new construction. Uh, we have to do a little bit of planning uh, for that. Um, we do have some plans on uh, um, some of the changes, like uh, uh, there's a, a, a program called Rural Health Care that we're taking a look at right now. We'll have some more information about that within the next month or so and that kind of goes into the planning with uh, uh, with the building plans that we have and and so forth um, I do want to mention one other thing Please do. Uh, in June we have our foundation golf outing on June 21st uh, anybody that hasn't signed up uh, get a hold of Deb, Pax Deb Paxton at the hospital and she'll take care of you you know that is a good event too it raises a lot of money for the foundation and the foundation is a very integral part of the hospital aren't they Absolutely is. Uh, they raise they raise money for important uh, equipment. We've got a hearing scanner for the OB unit for the for the um, uh, newborns up there, uh, and uh, we've got some security software with all the cybersecurity issues that are going on right now. Uh, so they they usually um, supply very important items for the hospital. You find there's a lot of technological change even in your department. Absolutely. It's, it's, <laughs> Practically happening, every it's day. happening all the time. I mean, it's hard to keep up with it sometimes. Exactly. Again, John Kraft, our guest. He's the Chief Financial Officer, Woodlawn Hospital. John, we appreciate your time this morning. Thanks so Absolutely. much for being here. My pleasure. All right.